Hi, have you ever done an exam or sat through a job interview and you knew all the information but at the time it just completely escaped you? And then perhaps once you got out you actually remembered what it was that you were supposed to remember in the exam or the um, interview. Hi, my name is Danette Fenton Menzies and today I wanted to talk to you about why that happens with our brain. Now, I'm just going to briefly describe the three main parts of our brain and what happens when we get stressed. So right at the back of our brain, sort of where your, your neck, back of your neck is, is what call, is called our brain stem. And in our brain stem, it does all of the automatic functioning. So our breathing, it you know, tells our blood to flow and things like that. So it's the first part of us that's developed in our mother's womb. Then the next part is sort of in the middle around here and that's called our reptilian part of our brain and it's developed for our survival. So it does fight, flight, flock or freeze. So there's four things it can do. Primarily but it's designed to look after us and protect us. So if it detects threat it will um, fire quite rapidly. At the front of our brain just up here is what we call our neocortex and that's where we do all of our thinking and um, our logic sits and also our creativity. Now what we know about our brain is that it comprises 2% of our body but it um, uses 20% of our energy and that's measured through our blood flow. So when things are going quite nicely and we're not feeling stressed, the blood flows evenly between those three areas of our brain. What happens however when we get stressed is that the blood is stripped away from the front part of our brain, the thinking part or the neocortex and it's given to the survival mechanism or the reptilian part of our brain in order to ensure that it has maximum energy in order to be able to protect us. So what we find is that um, in times of severe stress, you will find that you don't think at all. Um, for example, if there was a brown snake, um, which is a deadly snake here in Australia down on the floor, you wouldn't have me talking to you. I'd have bolted out the back door very, very quickly and probably be halfway up the yard before I realised that there was a brown snake right next to me. So in those times, we don't want our brain, to, the front part, the neocortex to kick in because you don't want to be looking going, that looks like a brown snake about to strike me. You want your body to pick up that threat and basically get you out of there safely. So what we see is when people go into exam conditions, when they go into job interviews, when they do public speaking, if they are nervous, they will breathe deeply. And what will happen is the blood flow will be stripped away from the, the neocortex and put into the survival mechanism. And it makes it then difficult for a person to recall information till they relax. And one of the ways they will relax is they will start to breathe more deeply. When we get stressed, we tend to breathe up um, shallowly in our chest or in some instances people get so stressed they actually hold their breath um, again which doesn't help the blood flow around your brain. Now in another video I'm going to talk to you about the chemicals that are released once we get become stressed but I hope you found that helpful and I hope that sort of made you realise that you know when you find your brain isn't quite working as well as it should it probably is because you're breathing um, up in your chest region or you're holding your breath rather than breathing deeply in your belly. Until next time, be extraordinary and big hugs.